it fell, 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 fail. You know how hard it is to say fail when you have an Invisalign in? Fail. Hey beautiful people, welcome back. I hope that you guys are all having an amazing day today and I really hope that if I'm being completely honest, the lighting in today's video is acceptable because last time you saw me, there was so much light shining through that I was like, like I was getting baked in Northern Michigan goodness. And today when I sat down to film, it is so gray, like I'm talking color of my shirt gray, that I cannot for the life of me get any light into this room. So I had to move my chair, like, I mean, probably three feet and farther back than I normally would. I had to adjust a ton of stuff. So if it looks weird or if it sounds a little bit different, I apologize, but it is a little bit, you know, configured differently today. Um, but you know what, that's okay because I really feel like that's the theme of the entire situation as we dive into some new makeup I've been testing out that flopped. There are some things in here that are just like, what? Like, I can't understand how they made it to production. They're that bad. Um, or some of them, they just like don't work. They don't make sense to me. What have you. So that's what we're going to be getting into today. It's kind of like the, the, the naughty side of an update video, but they're also super fun to film because I think it's kind of fun sometimes to just, you know, be a little bit more lighthearted, talk about things that don't work. And in the end, remember, if you like it, I don't, that's fine. Vice versa, also fine. So let's go ahead and get this video started off with something I'm just playing with at this point because I'm still so angry about it. Like I have a little pent up situation going on. Uh, this is from Makeup Revolution and this is their pore perfecting primer. And guys, I, <laughs> I was very upset. Um, this primer for me, it like coming off the heels of playing around with the one from e.l.f. because e.l.f. came out with their own dupe of the pore putty primer, like similar to the Tatcha consistency. And that primer is actually very good. I really like it. It's not for me as good as the Tatcha silk canvas, but it is something that if someone asked me, um, Hey Paige, like, do you think the Tatcha silk canvas is worth the money? What do you think this, that, the other? I will always tell you, hey, test out the one from e.l.f., see what you think of that consistency. If that works for you or you at least like the direction it's going, then maybe you could splurge on the Tatcha. But I think as far as a stepping stone into Tatcha silk canvas, the one from e.l.f. is a really nice affordable dupe. <laughs> and then I tried this one and I was like, what in the actual hell? It's like if you mixed, I want to say like, like Elmer's glue, like the consistency, that weird, like, like slimy consistency of like Elmer's glue, um, with like maybe some white water paint. And you ended up with like this weird slime that doesn't ever settle into anything ever. All it does is pill up under my foundation. It pills up when I wipe it on my face. Now you guys should know at this point, if you've been on my channel for a minute, right? I'm a big believer in devil's advocate. So let's just say, hypothetically speaking, you go in with the perfect amount the, on the perfect day, all the stars align. It does soak in slightly to your skin. And you're like, wow, I didn't have any of those issues that Paige just talked about. I am here to tell you this does literally nothing. <laughs> there is not one element of this that is poor perfecting. And I'm just going to like summarize all of it because I feel like I've droned on about this for 15 minutes at this point. The consistency, the color, the, the texture, the everything about this in no way leads to a poor perfected base at all. It actually leads to a slippery, slimy base of unnecessary weirdness. And I just, I can't, I can't deal. I cannot deal. I don't like it. I don't like the texture. Ugh, I don't like it. You know what else I don't like? Tractors tractors. Liter guys, I promise you, Northern Michigan, we still have like a little snow, but we have like this huge thaw over the weekend, whatever. And I have seen nothing but tractors on this road. I, it, huh, huh, huh. I'm like, do you could you maybe calm down and like not tractor at every single moment of every single day? Breathe, breathe. They're just driving down the road, eating their sandwiches, living their life. And I'm like, stop. Stop it. All right, so this next product is something I'm throwing in here. It's not a particularly new product, but I have been going through my stash lately, like all the makeup that I have. And on occasion, you know, like pulling pieces just to see, do I like them, do I not? Should I declutter them? Like just really trying to see what I need to keep and what I don't. And this is one of those products that when I used it, I was like, What'd you do? Like it, it, it accomplished absolutely nothing in my life. And that is this guy from Milani. It's their Prime Correct Face Primer. It's supposed to help correct redness and be pore minimizing. And it does neither of those two things. <laughs> like I put this over my cheek area, like right through here. I want to say it was maybe two-ish weeks ago. I was having like this really bad red breakout. I was like blotchy. There was some acne, some not. Like it was just all over the place. And I thought for sure out of all the anti-redness correcting stuff I have, 
I'm like, oh, well, surely something will work. So I put this on like the area right over here. And I was like, did it do anything? Did I even put it on? Like what's happening? So then I was like, okay, next day I tried to use it. I put it on half my face. I put none on the other side. Literally could not see one iota of a difference. And I'm like, this does absolutely nothing. And I don't know if it's the shade of green because it's such a light tint. Like you can barely see it on my skin. And once I rub it in, it's like, what green? Where did it go? And I can understand, like, I don't want to put this on and be like, oh, hello, Kermit the Frog here. Like, you, you don't want the green to show, but you also need it to, like, be present enough to actually counter the redness, because, like, that's the point. And this just didn't. Like, it, 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 it did nothing nothing. So I just wanted to throw it in here in case you're curious. It's not a newer product, but it is a product that didn't do jack shit for your girl. So I thought I would just, you know, throw that in there just in case you were wondering. So somehow as it gets lighter outside, it gets darker in here. <sighs> I think Northern Michigan just doesn't know how to have sun. Like it just, it, light shows up and the whole state just freaks out. All right. So going into the next couple of products, we have, I want to say two or three that are actually out of a recent full face new drugstore video, which I'll link up here. So if you want to see them in application and all that good stuff, you can check that video out. But we're going to go ahead and kick off this section with this little guy right here. This is actually new from Catrice. And you guys know how much I love Catrice. I'm even wearing mixed in with my foundation, their HD full coverage foundation today. It's one of my favorites. Like Catrice is one of those brands to me that like, I love them so much. Unlike that tractor that is literally driving by right now. Are you kidding me? <gasps> he just left. He just left. He just left. Mm. But anyways, I digress. Let's go ahead and talk about this. So this is the Catrice Slimmatic Camouflage Stick. I have it in the shade 002 Nature. And this for me is one of those products that I was actually really shocked by because when I first applied it, and you can see it even in that video, I was really impressed with the level of like creaminess, the emolliency factor that this has is really top notch because it goes on, it blends out. Like this is such an effortless product to glide and use in all of those ways. But of course, if it's in this video, obviously I don't like it and it is a fail. And that's based not on the application, the blend, the emolliency, anything like that. It is based solely on the fact that I cannot get it to set down and I cannot get it to stay. Like it is the most, like, it's like a psychotic puppy running around in my under eyes. It's just like, ah, oh, ah, ah. like it wants to live its best life, but it will not listen. I try to powder it and like set it down. Won't happen. It just gathers into my creases and runs off my face. And you know, you would think like Paige, you've tried one powder. No. I've tried four different powders. I have tried my top four favorite powders for my under eye. And it really does suck because like I said, the emolliency factor is really nice. But I mean, maybe if you're someone that has like super nice under eyes and they don't crease, they don't have like lines, wrinkles, maybe you're not 30. Like, I don't know. I'm not trying to like spill my age over here, but I'm 30. I'm 30. And my under eyes, they look like I'm 70. So for me, it's definitely a pass because I just can't, I cannot make it settle down. Like settle down settle down. It won't do what I can't make it. Now, the next item that I have is actually one that I tested out at the same time I tested that concealer. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. This is the Revolution Conceal and Define Infinite Longwear Concealer. I have it in the shade C1. And this concealer was so baffling to me because I actually, when I, like I mentioned, I applied it the same way I did in that, um, or with that other one, like side by side. And I loved the coverage, the way it looked, the way it blended, everything about this was so, so good. And after I got done, with that video. I continued to use it for like on and off for probably the last two, three ish weeks now. And I cannot explain where the coverage goes <laughs> like that for me, when it all boils down to these products, because when I make a video like this, I list them out and I list why I don't like them. And all I could put was coverage gone question mark. Like I don't even know where it goes. And it's like it absorbs like a lotion into my skin in the weirdest way possible. Like with most concealers, you'll be like, oh, you know, like for the Catrice one, for example, you apply it and I can't get it to set down. I can still see the concealer. I just can't get it to set correctly or it gathers in your fine lines or your wrinkles or what have you. And this one disappears. So like all of the pigment, all of the actual coverage disappears. It, it, it doesn't slough off. It doesn't collect. I mean, it does create and whatnot, but it's, it's more so an issue of where did the coverage go? And I, I honestly can't answer that. So for me, both of the concealers in that video, I just wanted you guys to know after I've used them both several times, they were both complete flops. I don't recommend either of them because I don't know if it's just me, but I like to actually have concealer and coverage that stays where I put it. Like I want it to just like, like, like lockdown. I would do that in like noise that everybody does that they like make that loud click noise. I don't know how to do that. But if I could, I would say I want this to 
on my under eyes and I just I can't make it do that so they both fail they fail they fail they fail they fail they fail, 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 fail. You know how hard it is to say fail when you have an Invisalign in fail now along those same lines another fail that I have that I did do a full video on is actually from it cosmetics This is their bye bye foundation. Um, it was the new one their oil matte free version I did do a full review on this that I'll link up here It was like a review first impression sort of thing and this one I wanted to put in this video just so you guys were aware I tried it multiple times after filming that um, Different primers mixing it with different foundations different concealers and powders and you know so on and so forth right and I do not find any added benefit or reason that you need to try this in your life. Like there is nothing about this for me that is standout or worth the time, the money, the, the messing around with it in any way. Um, if you are someone that does prefer it cosmetics and, and the CC creams that are like this work for you, great. You might really enjoy it. And I think for me, what gets me the most about this is that it's supposed to be like this easy to use, like workable, like happy go lucky type foundation. And there's nothing of the sort about this that's happy, nor is it go lucky. Your girl could not get less lucky while I was trying to wear it because if anything it it didn't work ever like no matter the mixture again primer concealer all of those things it just would not work I don't like the way that it sits and I feel like it almost builds up and makes my skin look very like thick and textured reminds me of like um like a concrete statue how it's like very porous and you know obviously made of concrete um it has like my skin when I wear this has that type of porous and thick and chunky type texture and I just don't like it so for me fail now the next item I have is from NYX and I think it's a really weird item but also a fail and I just wanted to like kind of open the discussion about it a little bit and that is this brush because I think this brush is one of those things that it is such a gimmick on every single level and I just wanted to kind of like I said open it up talk about it have a little discussion so this is their number what is this their 108 I believe this was specced as their primer brush and it's a regular like dense type texture but at the top of it here and I'm not sure how well you can see it um, on camera but at the top of it it has these little bumps and essentially I think the concept was you would take the primer and be able to like massage it into your skin massage it into your pores and I think it was supposed to just help things press better and like look more glass or skin like into your skin because you would have actually massaged it in with these little balls and I just wanted to come on here and say guys I think this brush is so so unnecessary like I have used it I've tested it I think don't get me wrong the quality of the brush itself is fine it has a really nice texture to it the bristles are nice and soft Soft. Feral is well seated like all the bristles are I haven't had any shedding nothing like that like construction wise This is a fine brush I think even I would take it one step farther than that and say that there are different strokes for different folks when it comes to brushes So I'm not against testing out different types and textures and like shapes and what have you Because I think that is what ultimately helps people tailor makeup to each individual um, Person and how they like to do their makeup so on and so forth But again, I just wanted to come on here and reiterate I don't think you need this brush because while the quality and all of that remains intact I think that you would be better seated to grab a brush that you already have that might have a nice dense texture and you can massage it in with any of those brushes and have it be just fine number one number two the only thing about this brush that I didn't like as far as construction and quality went was that these little balls which I thought was kind of ironic um, they soak up product quite quite diligently um, especially in my experience and that's with using it with several different types of textures um, and I just felt like like for this to soak up product is actually quite redundant given that it's supposed to help you massage that product into your skin um, so for me again just wanted to like open it up have a nice little conversation about it I don't think you need it I think it's a very unnecessary tool and ultimately something that if you buy it it is so finite in your makeup routine that I don't think you'd be able to get enough use out of it to justify purchasing it if that makes sense um, and I just I just don't think you need it and I think it's a fail and I just I don't like it and I really hated the fact that when I tried to use it with my primers that all my primer ended up inside the tippy top of these little damn bristles it made me very upset the next product that I have is from pure and this is something I used probably I would say a month or two ago and it was this really beautiful compact that they released that was half highlight half bronzer and I think that this like ooh. It does smell really nice, um, but I think this is just completely like 
oh, on so many levels, this makes me mad. So let's go ahead and talk first about the quality of the products in the actual pan. So first things first, I think that the actual quality of the highlights in here is really nice. If you swatch them, apply them to your skin, they do have a beautiful look, texture, feel. I feel it. There you go. You can kind of see them right there. Um, again, the lighting in here isn't the best, but they do have a beautiful glint glimmer sheen to them. They're very nice. The uh, bronzers over here are on the more matte side, but they do have a little bit of a, I'm going to call it like a light luminescence, more of like a satin finish than a full on matte. Now those are just like the basic, you know, run through it, quality texture sort of questions. And again, I think in that respect, they're okay. However, <laughs> however, for me personally, like I can get the personal side of it out of here right now. I can't use literally any aspect of this on my face because the bronzer, the only one that would work for me, even in the slightest, is this little teeny tiny one sixth of the palette right here. Um, and it's so small that I can't get any like brush into it and blend it out and have it look good on my skin. It looks very muddy when I try to blend it out because I have to use such a small brush to get it out of the pan, which again, I'll get to that in a second. Um, but out of the bronzer side, that's the only shade I can use. And out of the highlight side, there's none of these that are light enough for me to use on my skin tone. The closest that I can come is this light yellow shade right here. And even that one casts very weird on my skin tone, like with my complexion, if for whatever reason, it just doesn't work. So as far as the textures go, they might be nice, but the overall tones out of it don't work for me. So that's number one. Number two, I think that the layout and design of this, while it does look aesthetically pleasing, okay, you look at it and you're like, ooh, like I can kind of see it, like I can kind of get behind it. Um, it looks like a nice like half shimmery, half not pizza pie, like, okay, I love pizza, I'm on board. Um, but unfortunately, the logistical side of this takes rain and it just doesn't work out because there is no individualizing of these pans. So constantly what I would have happen when I would try to like dip in or use one of these shades just to see if I could make them work. I ended up getting like if I was going for highlight, I always ended up with a tip of bronzer in there. Or if I was going for bronzer, I ended up with highlight or the wrong color bronzer or, you know, just a host of unnecessary things when you could have just taken these shades and either individualize them or put some dividers up or you could have done more to like make this a user friendly type component because at the end of the day, again, the quality isn't bad. I just, and even like the packaging, I think it's really pretty. I just wish that it would have been something that was more user friendly and textures are nice, but I just think it's a fail because the packaging aspect of this just, it, it does not work. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. And then the last item that I have is actually something that I tested out. It might've even been in the same video as those concealers. I'm not sure, but this is newer from L'Oreal. This is their micro ink pen. It's their brow stylist line that came out with it. And it's like a, a felted tip kind of marker type tip that has like a staircase type design and it's supposed to be a type of product where you can kind of go through feather it into your brows and basically kind of a mixture of marker them but also at the same time keeping that nice light feathery kind of motion through your brows so I think I'm gonna start off by talking about this in the way when I first started using it and that was it had such a deep rich overwhelming pigmentation that I had to be very very careful with the application of it because it was so rich and it had so much buildup in the actual um, like tip of the marker right here. Kind of like when you freshly open a Crayola or a Sharpie or whatever, that first swipe you take is really nice and rich and deep. So when I was going through and using it the first couple of times, I was really trying to get the hang of like, okay, there's a lot of product, but if we plan for it, we know kind of where to put it. You know, you can, you can learn to work with a product and I actually did enjoy it at first. <laughs> and then I tried to use it on like the sixth or seventh day and there was just no product left. And I was like, where did it go? Like what happened? And there's something very weird about this because when I first started using it, it delivered a ton of product, a ton of payoff. And I am not exaggerating when I say within one week of using it, opening it, starting to use it, like opening the package, never gave it a chance to dry out, always kept the lid on tight. Like it's not a, it's not a packaging or an airtight issue. At the end of the day, what ended up happening here is that because it wasn't correctly um, measured and, and the flow wasn't able to be fixed and basically you had a marker that went dry. As a consumer, what you end up with is a product that you can't use for more than a week because it died out and it didn't work. And I wouldn't recommend a product that you can't use for longer than a week anyways, because I think that's, you know, it's wasteful and it doesn't work. So I think we have several areas of this product that would need to be examined and talked about. But at the end of the day, I think it was just a poor regulation of the flow of product and maybe the absorption of the tip at the end, like the felt tip, maybe that should be a different material, something that doesn't absorb 
absorb as much product um, or distribute as much product. I'm not really sure. But for me, this was actually a huge bummer. And you guys, that is it. That's the end of the video. I hope that it was helpful. Um, like I said, I know that it's, it kind of sucks sometimes to go back through and dog on some makeup, but I just, ugh, like these ones were ones that were really bothersome to me. And at the end of it, like I would say over half of these makeup products, I was super excited about. Like both concealers, that L'Oreal uh, brow pencil thing, this really pretty pure palette. Like there were things in here I was genuinely excited about. Hell, even the Oh, Makeup Revolution Pore Compact. I, oh my God, I was so pumped about that. And I think these videos are just really good to kind of center us back and remember, you know, sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. But as a consumer, I think it's really important that we share those experiences open and honest. And, you know, sure, we add some fun, some flair, whatever. Uh, but it's just, it's important to talk about because otherwise brands can't change, grow, evolve, and neither can we as consumers. So I hope that this was helpful to you. Let me know down below if it was, if you liked it. If you haven't checked me out yet on Instagram and on Twitter, those will both be linked down in the description. Of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do that as well. I do upload three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They go up between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. And you guys, I think that's everything. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! The last time you saw me on camera, like, I don't know, what was it? Okay, okay, okay. Hey, beautiful... Is there gloss on my teeth? Hey, beautiful people, welcome back. So today's video, we're gonna be doing a update. No, <laughs> it's supposed to be an update, not a update page, gosh.